did not fail me out. Some folks know that the quick and ran out a long time ago. Oh, yeah. But we thank God for his love yes. that never fails. Yes. Shall we stand to receive the word of God? We welcome uh, everyone here in the sanctuary to our live Facebook, our family, the live feed. We greet you uh, in Jesus' name and into the YouTube subscribers. We also welcome you into the live telecast or broadcast or videocast of this morning's worship service here at New Antioch Bible Fellowship. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. The word declares that there is no other name yeah. given under heaven or on earth mm -hmm. that can save men or women, boy or girl. Mm -hmm. And so, God, it's by that name yeah. that we call upon today. Yes. He said when we call upon his yeah. name, yeah. if we ask anything in yeah. his name, he will do it. And so the request today, Jesus, is that we need to see you. We ask that fields would decrease. Get out of the way. That you would increase and have your way. Rescue a sinner. Reclaim a backslider. Give residence a relationship to someone looking for you. In this hour. At this time. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Now, I just want to read from the Old Testament writing uh, that you see on the screen from Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, uh, verses 1 through 3. If you don't have a Bible and you would like to follow along, we please ask that you do. Please raise your hand and we will give you a Bible that you may follow along with us. We always believe, Mom, something. Don't take the preacher's word for it. That's right. On your own. You have to be a Berean. Yeah, the amen. Bereans in Act went and saw and checked to see if it was so. Yeah. You want to check and see if the word says yeah. what we're about to say. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. From the King James Version, verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker of thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Mm -hmm. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Amen? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. What I am about to say, what I'm about to communicate, and what I want to have a conversation with you this morning is the plan and the purpose. Casey, can you turn me up just a little bit? With the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on. The goal this morning, and the aim as it always is, is that through the Word of God, to bring illumination, uh, revelation, and application. To our hearts, to our minds, to transform us and to grow us closer to the God of our deliverance. Amen. Uh, I want to ask a question. Uh, do you believe the most important, unequivocal, irrevocable, undisputed, conclusively, Completely, decisively, convincingly, did you leave me? Okay. And permanently, absolutely, Michelle, that at the end of the day, Chris, Dr. Green, Dr. Stewart, that at the end of the day, Ralph Wilson, mm -hmm. all that really matters is relationship. Is your relationship. Yes. Yes. If there's one thing that you can count on, when everybody else has left, the smoke has cleared and the dust has settled, can you count on a relationship with someone who loves you no matter where you are and what you've done? It's all about relationship. I don't care how much money you have. That's right. 
I don't care what zip code you live in. I don't care what car you drive. I don't care about the amount of your house you live in. I don't care about who your friends are. The only thing that matters in this life is relationship. That when we cut through the thick and the thin, Tariel, that, that today when we pass, get past the black and the white, that when the roller coaster of life, Mom, something, Mom, uh, Carter, takes us up the ascent to the highest point and then drops us down and takes us around the curves, Henrietta, and we're holding on for dear life, the only thing that matters is relationship. Yes, that was cool. Yes, yes, yes. I know you can't wait for the ride to stop. I know you're about ready to vomit. But life is like that. Life was never meant to be easy. But as long as you're in a relationship, come on, there you go. Come on, set it up, God. Set it up. With God, that's it. There you go. You can hold on to Him until the ride stops. That's right. That's right. That's right. 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 To me, I realized and grew up in the era of black and white TV. Mm. <laughs> and even Tonto and the Lone Ranger, although he was a Lone Ranger, even he had his Tonto. They had a reading. Yes. There are some folks who believe that they, Sharita, can live life without anyone else. Mm -hmm. I respectfully disagree. Mm -hmm. Because the plan and the purpose with the power of God, whose image we were created in, tells me and informs me that this is all about relationship. Mm -hmm. And isn't it, Mama T, T, like the true living God, whose image we are created in? Did you know you were created to be in a relationship with Him? Yes. It's the reason why you're here. Even before, I'm going to show you in a minute, before your mom and daddy got together and were in thoughts, God knew about you. Yes. I'm about to show you. It's in the text, but I'm not there yet. It's his errant and his infallible and unadulterated word, Ma Michelle and, and Dr. Green, that has drawn our attention to uh, this vertical uh, and this horizontal relationship uh, uh, that we're designed to take a look at today that God has drawn our attention. Uh, and we will see. I hate to bust somebody's bubble, but a relationship is not somebody who dictates and control somebody else. Oh, that's right. a dictatorship. Yes. But a relationship is about the two of us, in spite of our imperfections, yes. mm -hmm. yes. in spite of our flaws and our flaps and our floundering and our foolishness, yes. Yes. put Jesus in the middle of the relation. Oh, I'm yes. Come on, I'm talking the relationship about and allows the two of us right. to spend time together. Yes. This is the ultimate examination. Here are our definitions for relationship. The quality or state of being can, related and interrelated. An aspect of quality such as resemblance that attaches to or more things or parts as being or belonging or working. You read this? Together. This is a relationship. Not I don't because you won't. <laughs> <laughs> Together or as being the same kind. Here are our sentences. I'm not doing the house as my girl for our English etymologist extraordinaires. Uh, here are our sentences. Our interaction, interdependence, association. That's supposed to be linked. Like, like, no, link. I'm just kidding. Connection, uh, alliance, uh, tie up, tie in, bond, uh, propinquity. You tell somebody I'm in a propinquity next time you see me. <laughs> Mess them up. 
Throw that thousand dollar world that two dollar brand. You have a boyfriend? No, I have a, I'm in a pro. Kinship. To your stock. Blood time, you got messed up. There are our quotes for it. I can't go to the right or left. Our relationship uh, go through hell. Real relationships get through it. No, all relationships go through hell. Real relationships, every other time I walk down the high five, but I like that. They go through it. They get through it. Uh, in a relationship, one, when one tells the truth, they don't have to remember anything. Successful relationships start by giving up control. Yes. See, I know you're quiet right there, JT. Somebody said, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Janet Jackson, you not it? All right. Giving up control. Giving up the need to be loved. Mm -hmm. And I wrote that part to you. I said, no, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Giving up the need to be loved. All of us want to be loved. Yes. Anybody here don't want to be loved? <laughs> I didn't think so. Listen, Dorcas, if nobody else would love me, guess what? I'll love myself. <laughs> but I need to be loved. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. But you don't have to give up love to become a doormat and let somebody walk all over you. Come on. That's not a relationship. Right. Let me finish my quote. Or, or want it or, or wanted, or right all the time. Yeah, you don't have to be wanted or be right all the time. Let me say that again, Henry Allen. You don't have to be right all the time. Let me say that to myself. I just, I just look straight in. I can't look over there. You don't have to be right all the time. You ain't got somebody you like that's right all the time? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm a kid, you know. I won't go down swinging room, Chris, and fly that suit. Damn wrong. Nobody said dead wrong. wrong. You know? Did you know you can be right and still be wrong? Yes. 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 I'm not going in that pew, man. I'm, I'm going to pick. That was a quote from Mark. Let me move on. Mark Manson. Uh, quote, never another problem to be solved oh, because Barry, you need a ride home. Or oh, Karen, you need a ride home. Never another problem to be solved. Uh, become more important than a person to be loved. Let me say that again. Never let a problem to be solved become more important than a person to be loved. Amen. They should use that in this election cycle. Amen. You want to love problems, you want to solve problems, you want to love somebody who don't love. Be your after you scholar. No. I won't, somebody said, well, come on, Ralph. That's a good, good book commercial. Here's the last one. Relationships get stronger. Uh, is that Winston? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I got spell check and still don't work. Oh, boy. I know I'm right. You just read the room. The two of us is just that stupid. Right, Jamie, same song. Go to the next one. Oh, Lord. I, 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 I changed it so they wouldn't see it too much. Listen, listen, relationships get stronger. Relationships get stronger when, that's supposed to be when, both of you are willing to understand mistakes. Yes. That typo was there for a perfect. Please, you see my mistake. Come on, man. It's him, it ain't him. Feels as long gone. It's the spirit that's in the house. And forgive me, forgive me. This is the part I got stuck on. Forget. You thought I had trouble with that. <laughs> Are you able to forgive and forget in a relationship? We have a dust up for about 10 minutes, sometimes longer, but guess what? We don't remember it. Come on now. You, you can't remember it. You know how much Jesus says seven times seventy? I got more than them. I, yes. I can count 490 times. Yeah. All right, let me move on around. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Yeah. Where am I at? Come on here. Casey, help me, bro. Move that slide while I change things up here. 
Now he's a benediction, Dr. Green, and really go home. But here are our takeaways from our text. And I want to lay some historicity uh, to this moment, and then we'll go into the text and, and mind what the pericope has for us for uh, illumination, uh, revelation, and application. Uh, in chapter 1, Jeremiah, uh, who is known, uh, Dr. Stewart, uh, as the weeping prophet, uh, the reason why he is a weeping prophet because he loves God so much uh, and he loves God's people. But God's people don't love God. Uh, and so he is witnessing and it's a part of they keep sinning and God keeps forgiving. Uh, so he's weeping over Israel uh, who has left their first love. Uh, and he introduces himself uh, to the readers and us. Uh, he says, when the word of God in verse 1 uh, let, me, let me drop down to verse 4 in chapter 1. Uh, just flip uh, uh, about 32 pews backwards uh, and arrive at this pew in the same church of Jeremiah. Uh, in verse 4 from the King James Version, uh, this is huge because I'm about to go off. Uh, watch this. He says, watch this. He says, then, uh, after the family uh, uh, identification of who he is in verses 1, 2, and 3, he says, then. And I always believe, Mom, something when, after when, there is a then. Uh, after then. Uh, watch this now. The word of the Lord came unto me. And that was enough for me to really pull away from the table and stop typing long enough. Uh, watch this family. Uh, uh, that Jeremiah and God are in a relationship. Okay. I want no question, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. God will send his word to all of us, but especially to those who are in a relationship yeah. uh, with him. Uh, and I believe, Henrietta, that the text tells us, it says unto him, here's what the word of God and the Lord came to Jeremiah and said, Michelle. Uh, this is some deep stuff. He says, before I formed thee uh, in the belly, I knew thee. Okay. Okay. What that says to me, and I said it earlier, and I know I'll get back to it soon enough, before my mom and daddy even met each other, he was a shoe salesman and she was home. And he knocked on the door and saw her. And out of seeing her, I did not know they would have seven boys. But God says the moment they met, I knew Ann and Lester were going to have seven boys. And then I dropped down to next to last or near last and here I is. And, and there you are, in your family. Yes. Right. That before your children were born, right. God knew exactly who was going to have them with you. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Whether or not they were going to stick around long enough to raise them with you. He says, I formed you in the belly, and I knew you. And before you came forth, not only were, were you with the mother for how long you were, or who gave you birth, he said before you pushed through and out of the womb, he said, I sanctified you. That means that God set Jeremiah apart for holy service. No, no, no foolishness. Uh, and I want to serve just a gentle, kind notice that all of us in this room and all of those who are watching on Facebook and those who are watching on YouTube, this same language fits us. Yes. Yes. That God knew us yes. before we were. The only difference, Mom Sucker, is some of us chose to go a different way. Yeah, right, right. 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 Help us. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Then he says, I ordain thee a prophet. And I'm so glad Dr. Green and Dr. Stewart that this ain't a false prophet for profit. But this is a prophet when defined in the Old Testament times is someone who will only say what God has told them to say. And represent God. Thank God for prophets of Old Testament times. Because we got some clowns out here now. And if you don't watch the clowns and don't notice the clown, you'll soon be a part of the circus. That's right. Yeah. 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 He said, 
before thou comest forth out of the womb, I set you apart, and I ordained you a prophet to proclaim, to publish, to broadcast, to speak only my words that are spoken to you. And Sean, I had to go even deeper than that. This is just not me just talking to myself. But he says for Jeremiah and for us, to all nations, I like Jeremiah's response, uh, Dr. Wilson, if you're still reading chapter 1 in the first few. Uh, because it's important to understand, uh, 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 I know some other folks who think, uh, Georgina, that God not only sanctified them and ordained them, uh, but they walk on holy ground and are holier than others. Yeah. And look over their glasses at people and stare down at them and think that they're not worthy of the salvation of the grace that God is yeah. offering everybody. I never was one for titles. Mm. Yeah. Pastor, for you can have all that. Yeah. Junior title. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a title person. All I want to be is the best Don feels that God created him to be and serve him. And I don't need a title to do that. Before I got here, I was there. And I served him there just as hard as I served him right When I didn't have a title, only thing I know about my life is sinner saved by grace. Yes. That's, my, that's what you can call me. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Jeremiah, I call it Jerry. Come on. <laughs> you don't mind if I Jerry Mander for a while? Watch this. He said, watch this, Ralph. I'm not painting no lines. The lines are already here. Watch this. He said, then said I, uh, Lord God, he knows who he is mm -hmm. and who he is in front of him and who is speaking to him. He says, behold, I cannot speak. Uh, here's why. For I'm a child. In other words, God, because of my finiteness, my limitedness, and my uh, inadequacy, I don't have all that you are requiring me now that you've ordained me a prophet to go and say anything to anybody. I'm just a child. And God responds right back. I'll put my words in your mouth. You got to read it. That's why you can't hang around and listen to folks who ain't preaching the word. Come on, Reverend. God didn't send them, and they're none of his. Don't get tickled with your ear or your flesh. This stuff is meant to comfort you, not to make you comfortable. And all that stuff they promised in Jordan still ain't come to pass. I'm tired of folks telling me money coming. When? Put a date on it. Got me waiting and standing around looking for some money. And God says, yeah, it's coming when you go to work. <laughs> oh. I know y'all can't see me when I'm coming back. I'm back now. <laughs> you can't give me a week off. He said, I put my words in your mouth. Let me get out of here. The protocols I promise uh, is like this. In your weakness, my strength shall prevail. Uh, here's something we said uh, 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 in our class. Uh, 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 on Thursday night. Uh, and, and the Bible says uh, 365 times uh, this one phrase or this one statement. Uh, and I said, it's a keeper. Here's what the Bible says every day of your life. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Yeah. There are 365 times God says it in his word and one for every day. I'll wait till it gets home. Yeah. Call me if you're riding down the street and don't know what I'm saying. If you don't think that God is not telling you, he's got you, simply believe, don't be afraid. I wish Mary Hayes was here. She whispered to me, only believe. There she was. She was here a few weeks ago. That was her favorite line to me. Don't be afraid, Pastor. Only believe. He says, I'm with you to deliver you. He gives them blessed assurance in verses 8. Through nine. Uh, here's something else that I gotta get the text in. I know this ain't the assignment, I'm trying to get there. You can't be afraid of faces. That's right. 
You can't be afraid of faces. I didn't make it up, it's in the text. Verse 8, be not afraid. Oh, I heard you. Thank you, Josie Louie. Don't be afraid of their faces. Here's something else that's not in the text. Jeremiah never said he wouldn't go. In other words, God is not going to get behind you and beg you and plead with you and get on his knees and say, please, 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 please. No. You and I have to make the choice. Yes. Folks are real fast to bite him in their struggle and ain't heard from him in years, ain't seen him in years, but let all hell break loose and see who they right. call first. Right. Yeah. Right. And then get mad when God take his time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't done nothing. There's only been two minutes. I'm waiting for him to move. <laughs> Here's something I'm, I, 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 I want to say this case, and I got I to give you some, some, some props, bro. God is waiting for us to do some things. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There he is. I stopped asking him to do stuff. I have. I simply know that he will. But here is the inverse of that. I have to get off my skin thin behind and do something for him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'll pass on my <laughs> Can't get no help in here, Jeanette. <laughs> The Lord put forth his hand and gave Jeremiah his word. Uh, so and move up 31, uh, Peter to verse chapter 32. You just got to go to verse chapter 32. Uh, it's right next door to our text. Watch this. My notes say, watch this, watch this. <laughs> Sometimes, watch this, uh, Chairman Banks, uh, it is where and it is who God is sending us to to say what he has told us to say. So there's a caveat to that. You can get all prayed up. You can get all man, woman up, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, full of the spirit. But one of the things that you have, and I have to understand, Mom Sumter uh, and Mom Carter, is where God is sending us to, to say what needs to be said, not behind nobody back, but to their face, mm -hmm. that they need Jesus. That's right. Uh, and you can sometimes expect somebody's not going to like you and there's going to be opposition against what you just said to them. Y'all got quiet. Those of us who know who are witness for him, sometimes it don't go the way it's supposed to go. Some folks are going to get mad at you. They don't want to talk to you. I want you to get out of their face. But you and I have to understand before you leave here, this has never been a popularity contest. Right. Right. If you're trying to be popular, you've got the wrong station. Yeah. That's the world. But in here, the only personality that matters is King Jesus. That's it. Yes. Come on, lift him up, dog. Yes, Lord. Yes. You got to understand there's going to be opposition. Well, Pastor, I'm sanctified. Mm -hmm. Pastor, I'm ordained. Pastor, I'm a prophet or a prophetess. But you still got to go. And understand rejection, Elder Stewart, and opposition may be the lay of the land. But you still got to go. Jeremiah had no problem going. Somebody ought to be saying, where did he send him, Pastor? He sent him to King Zedekiah. And the Bible says that he prophesied that Zedekiah, your reign is soon coming to an end. And you will die shortly. And your eyes will be put out and you will be blind if you're reading the text. It's all there. Yeah. Sometimes, Dr. Green, you got to say some tough stuff to some tough people yeah. who don't want to hear yes. the tough stuff. That's yes. right. Yes. That's right. Yes. But I hear Dr. Charles Stanley simply reminding me, you do what God told you to do, and you leave the consequences yeah, to him. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, Come on. Right. Come on. You got to grow up with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Mom, if I don't want to hurt nobody feel. Mm -hmm. I still want to be friends. <laughs> they might not want to take me to dinner. You know, they might not want to play with golf with me. Who cares? I go out on the golf course too by myself a whole lot of time. And then God will send me some folk. Yes. 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 Who I don't even know. Yes. Mm -hmm. You thought that was tough. 
if you prophet, if you ordain, and you sanctify him, you know, Jeremiah is then told, I'm just going through the history real quick, to purchase a piece of property in his hometown. Now, for all the real estate boss, you're like, you know what, Pastor, that's a good investment. You can't go wrong with real estate. You just got to hold on to it, pay the taxes, and soon your day will come. You'll triple your money, because land is expensive and it's valuable. But this land, God have mercy. This land is under besieged by the Babylonians. Uh, and there's nothing but ruin and destruction and death on the dirt. Uh, and so you can imagine, uh, if God told you to go and buy some property that is in ruins, I, God, I swear, I, I keep my money. Right, right. Uh, but it's deeper than that. He's in prison. Yeah. And he can't even see what it is God is telling him to go buy. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Oh, wow. uh, and so all I want to broadcast, Mom, uh, 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 Marcella, uh, and, and have somebody understand before we leave here, this is about UF. UF is the initial. Mm -hmm. Unflinchable faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't flinch just because you broke a toenail or a fingernail. Mm -hmm. all right. You can't crumble like a rich cracker. Just because the heat is turned up a little hotter, you and I have to have unflinchable faith in spite of and in front of the opposition that's going to be a part of your journey and your walk with God. No one in the Christian faith rolls around in a spiritual bubble and not touch with the, with, with, with the problems and the pain of other people. Casey, I might need new batteries. I don't think this mic is on. <laughs> God tells him to purchase a field that is under besieged, under besieged, under besieged, is besieged, is under destruction, is in ruins, and I just titled it, it's worthless dirt. Mm. Jeremiah gets his coins together and purchases the field. Some of us are from St. Louis, unless we see it. And then some of us aren't from St. Louis. Even if we do see it, we still don't believe it. <laughs> Y'all ain't true. <laughs> While he is in prison, I need you to high five a neighbor and say, neighbor? Yeah. While he's in prison. Wow. Good enough. While he's in captivity, while he hasn't even seen yeah. or been to the location. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, maybe he had a thought, if I ever get out of here, if I ever be released, Mom Sandy, yeah. if I ever taste freedom, Mom Carter, oh. uh, if it ever releases me from this captivity, all Jeremiah did with unflinching faith is responded to what God had told him yeah. to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. There are five more pews uh, that I need to get through. Uh, watch this. I think I kind of right. The ways of men... This is in 32. Israel obeyed not God's voice. These are the subsections that I'm worried about. The provocation of God's anger. Uh, here's for a time of restoration, and God will bring good to his people. I'm at my text now. Hallelujah. And I got about 20 minutes to go. Watch this. The first thing I want to talk about uh, from the takeaway is constant communication. Constant communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody needs to hear that. Constant Communication. The word of God says, moreover, the Hebrew word is gam, it's G-A-M. It means in addition to what Jeremiah has already said, uh, it's the word. Uh, and I took my time, Henrietta, because I wanted to go deep into the Hebrew and find out what the word meant, uh, Marcella. And the Hebrew word is dabah. It means the cause, the act, the answer pertaining to power, plan, provision, purpose. So now you know what God's word is about. In case you missed it, it's about his cause, it's about his action, it's about his answer, it's about pertaining to his power, his plan, his provision, and his purpose. The Bible says the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. Uh, but it's the second time. That's why this is consistent or constant communication. God will consistently and constantly 
talk to us. Watch this, girl. It doesn't matter where you are. I don't need to walk for a minute. You mean to tell me that even in even in prison, God's word will find you and comfort you and speak to you and encourage you. God says this word the first time uh, Jeremiah was in liberty. He was free. But now God says this word even though he's in captivity. So I want to help somebody, uh, even if you're in liberty and you're free right now, in case something battles you up and puts the shackles in chains, it's called life, yes. on you, yes. you'll still have God's word. Yes. This is an indication that God not only was in a relationship with Jeremiah, but that there is no place, there is no space, there is no time, there is no matter, there is no wherever, there is no whatever, there is no whenever, there is no however, there is no whoever. God's word will find you right where you are. I'm preaching hard and I'm hearing amen. word of the Lord came to him. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you still reading verse 1? Mm -hmm. uh, follow along. Yeah. Uh, in the court in the prison. Uh, here we are in his captivity. Uh, in his loneliness, uh, Dorcas. Uh, in his all by himself. The word of the Lord, never mind the chains, never mind the shackles, never mind the iron bars, never mind the darkness, never mind the dreariness, never mind the dirtiness, never mind the dilapidated, never mind the deplorable, despicable, disabled, how distant he was from his God. His word still got through. Even while he was shut up, excuse me, in the court, let me drop this PSA real quick. Just because life has you shut up, it doesn't mean you shut out. Come on. Come on, brother. Okay. This is just for the folks in a relationship, I guess, because they don't want to quit. Listen, anybody in a relationship know with God, you ain't never shut out. You may be shut up in life. Things may be 8 plus 8 is 24 right now. And life is crazy enough that the man can be like that. Yeah. But here is the hookup. Just because you're shut up doesn't mean you're shut out. Yeah. I don't know about you, yeah. but I get excited. Yeah. That it doesn't matter what has me or who has me, God still is in control. Yeah. 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 And his word can get to me. You gotta be shut up in order to know you can never shut up. Yeah. God can speak through whatever has you captive. Handcuffed, shackled, and chains of his illness and his death, he still breaks through. All I heard last week was, My son, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I needed to hear that. I took about four calls yeah. last week. You won't have enough time if I told you what they were about. Yeah. 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 And here I am doing my own stuff. Yeah. But his word still found me. Yes. Yes. Sharia caught me in a way. Yes. Yes. I mean, I ain't going to talk much to you. It's between right. you and the Lord. Right there. But I was having a Michael Jackson moment. Mm. I should have Kept it in the closet. <laughs> Sometimes you come out of the closet too soon. Yeah. <laughs> I know folks are out there now. They got their closet. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about your prayer closet. You got to stay in the closet and don't come out until God is finished. I thought I could mold it down. I don't want to go to Walmart. I'm just like, I got to go to I got to go back and get him. Yeah. And I said, Lord, don't let me run in. Here comes two. You know what, God? I told you to stay home. Ain't nothing against you, bro. You God sent you. I should have stayed in the closet. Because he wasn't done. You got to stay in the closet. Mm, yeah, that's good. Uh, 
Yes. You may be shut up, but you never shut up. Together, nothing and no one is able or can hinder, can halt, can stop or cease or block or deny God's word getting through to you. Yes. Someone right here and right now. This is in my notes, and I said that earlier, I'm going to keep saying it because somebody needs to hear it. Me included. Nothing and no one is able to stop God's word. Let me give my, my hook, uh, Junior. You may be shut up, but you're not shut up. Yes, yeah. Right now it's tough. Uh, it's tight. Uh, it's twisted. Yeah. Pastor, you don't understand. I'm tired up. I'm tangled up. And the world just keeps on turning. Mm -hmm. I got news for you. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. And you will triumph. Yeah. Even in the midst of your tough. In the midst of your tight. And in the midst of your twisted, tied up, tangled up. And the world keeps on turning. There's good news. God says you will triumph. Yeah. He's able. Yes, he is. The Lord will not only come unto you. Please know you will never be abandoned. Yeah. And my notes say it again. Somebody needs to hear this. Victory is yours. Yeah. You have constant yes. communication. Yeah. One of the things I know, and I got to take a break so I can breathe a little bit. One thing I know about relationships, watch this, uh, marital or, or, or significant other or Whoever your bestie or whoever it is, your worst thing, I don't care who it is. <laughs> you got a worst thing. Somebody walk me. You got, you got a worst thing. Is that when communication stops, you don't have nothing else. You're no longer in a relationship when someone you call was in a relationship stops talking to you. I don't know, but my wife said, uh, she asked me all the time, what did you say? <laughs> the reason why I'm on mute, because that's what it is, I'm mute. But the, she's trying to keep the relationship, because the moment you stop talking, and right married to that is trust. Yes. Yes. You don't trust each other, and you don't talk to each other, you don't have, did I just say you don't? You don't have a relationship. That's right. That's right. Why are you here to fix your marriage? You can make an appointment and I'll see you. But this is about relationship with the living God. God wants us to come to him. I had a moment, Jordan, when, when someone said to me, you know, your son asked me about this now, and I got upset. I took offense to it, Ralph. Here's why. Because I'm his daddy. I want my child to come to his daddy. Now you know how God feels about it. If we go to somebody else or something else, pull it on them. And God said, I'm your father. You ain't got to tell nobody else. Besides, I knew you. Before you knew who won't talk to you. <laughs> Let me tell you about my friend. I can't Come see. I don't need to see no more. I'm just going to go halfway through the door. You don't see this. No. This is constant communication. This is the autumn examination. I got to really go. I can't see the board now. <laughs> character, character confession. Let's do this. Character confession. I got to go. That's the Hebrew word is called for, for this word uh, that we're looking at here. Uh, and it means uh, on the other side. Uh, verse 2. Thus. Uh, he's talking about on the other side. Not what you just read. But on the other side of God, Jeremiah being shut up but not shut out uh, in the prison. God said, here's something I want you to take with you along with what we just talked about. He says, save the Lord. The Greek word is Jehovah, mm -hmm. or the Hebrew word is Jehovah. It means eternal, self-existing. Yep. I don't know of anybody else who self-existed. That's right. Take a moment and think about it. Yeah. And if you stand up and raise your hand, I'll talk to you after service. Because <laughs> you need his air to breathe. That's right. I need to stop right there. Yes. Well, Pastor, I ain't going to breathe his air. Okay, hold your breath. <laughs> 
That's the only one for that. And then you're going to need somebody to help out. And at the very end, you want to... He says, Ralph, listen, on the other side, Jeremiah, on my word finding you, shut up but not shut out. Uh, please know. And Jeremiah is telling his readers and us right now that this is the self-existent one. God doesn't need anybody's help. He's God all by himself. That's right. uh, I, had a, I had a dispute with God at one time, Sean, uh, and I thought I would throw a rock up there and try to hit him, but you know the rock almost hit me. Yeah. I didn't know much about gravity, but I was trying to hit him. I wanted his attention. Because I wanted to make an appeal to him. And God said, you're in the right place. Because no, there's nobody that can appeal to me. Or I have to appeal to. Right. Yeah. You know what I just said? Yeah, right. God has nobody he has to answer to. That's right. That's right. Everybody here. Facebook. Like YouTube. You got somebody to answer to. Yes. And if you don't think so, there is judgment and you still have to. Come on. I ain't saying nothing down here, Pastor. Okay. You'll have your moment. And you still have to. Every knee shall bow. Come on. Every tongue shall confess. He says, I'm the Lord, the maker, Jehovah, the self-existent or eternal Jehovah, the living God. Uh, and there are three P's that I want to bring up. It's the power of God. That he has, and it's the promise of God, and it's the, the provision of God that he's telling uh, uh, Jeremiah, and Jeremiah is telling us, this is the Lord, his maker thereof, the Lord has formed it, uh, and to establish it, uh, and the Lord uh, is his name. So I went in a little harder, a little deeper, uh, Janae, because I wanted to find out, and I don't see in the scripture, nobody else helping the Lord. No. No. <laughs> now this text. They can, but not, not in this moment. It's just the Lord. Yes. Jeremiah could have said, you know, I wrote Facebook. <laughs> and I got 32 likes in it. <laughs> <laughs> but that ain't going to help. Right. Folks can like and love, but they, they ain't going to help. Mm. Okay, I'm there, and I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Let's say if the Lord your maker. So watch this. Watch this, Mom, something. Proverbs 22, 1 declares, a good man. Is better than riches. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Somebody saying, well, Pastor, I don't want to be broke. <laughs> no, I'd rather have a good name than be broke. Yes. Than to trust in riches and cheat someone right. and rip them off. Right. Come on now. Right. Come on now. And even if I don't do that, if I have riches, I know some rich people that are miserable. Amen. I'm not saying anything against having money and having wealth. This is not the moment. Because right. God does provide. I get that point. Yes. Uh, but this is about choosing a better name, mm -hmm. uh, a name that is better than the riches. Yeah. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. That's Proverbs 22 1. So God prefers upright people who will fear him and know that riches never have and never will impress him. That's right. Oh. I believe while the work of God is, is some, it ain't hoaxing. But some folks never been called to it, first of all. And then second of all, they think it's employment. And then third of all, they think that the, the church is supposed to support them and love them and buy them jets and limousines. Mm -hmm. But nowhere in the word of God does riches impress him. Yeah. Okay, Pastor, what are we trying to say? All you got to do is look at your money, see if his name ain't on it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Okay, I can go on. Listen, listen, this is about God's great name. And above him, there is no other. Right. See, see, back home, uh, back in Philly, in the black top jungle where I come from, the dome, we call it. Hello, North Hills. I know some of y'all watching. Uh, God has a rep. We never could say reputation, Arturia. We just took it off. And God had, in the project, they just cut stuff off when you couldn't pronounce it. God has a rep. Uh -huh. That's the one representing him. Uh, he has a reputation. In fact, uh, uh, his reputation precedes him. And Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore go boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy. It precedes him. And find grace. Before you get there, he's there waiting on you now. Come on. In your time of need. Yeah. Uh, that's why we call him Al Shaddai. 
That's why we call him El Elyon. That's why we call him Adonai, Yahweh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Tishkin, Jehovah Mikatash, Jehovah Ole, Elohim, Kwana, yeah. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, yeah. Jehovah Jehovah. Well, yeah. Pastor, I can't remember all those Jehovah's. You can just call him the Lord in the Just call him. Yeah. Yeah. Just call him. Yeah. You can say, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That is. That is, that's affirmative, that is his name. Here comes the close. I got 10 minutes. Here comes the close. God's desire for people uh, uh, to call unto him and I will. I cut it off because he gives us what he will do. Casey, can you move that? Okay. Call unto me and I will. And the reason why I stopped short because the text can tell us that if you're reading it. But I like to fill in the blanks. That when I call into him, I get Jeremiah 3, 33, 3. He says, I will answer you and show you the great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Mm -hmm. That's just a few of the things. Yep. But God is all everything. Yeah. Whatever you need, yeah. God will do. Whatever you desire, if it's in his word and in his will, God will fulfill it. Yeah. In his name, you can call on him. One of the things I don't like about cell phones, and yet I do like it. When somebody calls, Taria, I got call my ID. <laughs> y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Cause y'all know where I'm ready to go. I, I just gotta see who's in here. <laughs> Let me try to start. Maybe you look over and somebody's calling you don't want to talk to. You might as well be set free. Come on now. And then text is just as bad as good as calling. Because soon you see him. Did you get my text? Right. <laughs> and now, Apple has got a, I'm sorry, well, I just have a Cell phones got so smart, you can see where they read it already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm looking for. I see delivered. That means I sent it to you. Yeah. I'm going to see if you read it. And if you read it, Junior, I'm going to go all day by my phone for you to call me on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I know you read it. That's what I do. We can talk like this. He ain't called. I went over here and did something for my two. I told him, he still ain't called. Don't let me have to call him. I know he just read my text. And you be glued to the phone. Waiting for somebody to call him. Hey, God, I'm sick, you so. He tell you to go somewhere else. That's right. But I'm stuck to the phone waiting on Junior. Junior's occupied with the storm relief and all that stuff he had to deal with. All I know is how come he ain't called me back. <laughs> <laughs> and it's at 11 now. I'll see him tomorrow in men's ministry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think we ain't going to talk about this? As soon as he said out, he said, hello. I said, hey, man, let me holler at you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> But when you send God a call, come on. See, that's the hard time. The vertical is different. God doesn't do, go by identifying. He already knows who's calling. Let me help somebody. I wish Mary C was here. Did you know that right now is history to God? I'm sitting right here now. God already knew we'd be here. So if He knew that you were going to call, because He sent whatever He sent, to see if you, if you would call him. Mm, mm, mm. Right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to call Junior. I ain't even praying on that. I'm just going to call you. I want to tell you something. You're fine. What do you want to say to him, Pastor? None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> we got some stuff we want to talk about. God is no different. Right, right, right. Amen. And here's what 
the text told me, even though Jeremiah is shut up but never shut up, God is telling him, even where you are, that's right. I still am I desire. Listen, God doesn't make us do anything. He says, call unto me. He doesn't say, you better call. I'm waiting on your call. Pick up the phone now. He just makes it, he makes an invitation. That's what that is. You're invited to call him. Whenever you've been shut up, God through his word tell you you are shut out. You just got a calling. And I will. I will. That's affirmative. I will. Answer you. I gotta go. I gotta go. I got no time left. Watch this. The reason why God wants us to call him, and I sat for this moment with the Lord in the You got a purpose for Jeremiah to call, but a purpose even more for us in 2024. Why we should call him. James 1 5 6 says, Any man lack wisdom. Let him ask God. That's why I don't post stuff on Facebook. I don't go to Snapchat. I don't do IG, Instagram. I don't do none of that. Although I have it all, I don't do it all. Simply because when I have a horizontal, and I know it's a vertical uh, requirement, which it always is, to call him, I stop fooling around with the horizontal and just go and call him. Right, 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 right. God says, I will give wisdom. Uh, I, I'm a baby. That means there's no limit to the wisdom that you're asking for that he won't provide. You can keep asking him and keep asking, God, I don't understand this. God, I don't understand What do you want me to do here? How do you want me to be like this? What do you want me to learn today? I hear it's done and I'm done. Why Jeremiah is telling us to call and the Lord, uh, call upon the Lord. Because God doesn't want any of us. Watch verse 6. Walking around, tossed, to and fro. I'm in James 1. Amen. Back and forth. Never disciple. Never decided. Always confused. You're more tossed than you are turned on to God. And God says, I don't want anybody of my children walking around confused. Toss to and fro, even though the storm is raging, even though the billows are rolling, yeah. you can rest assured that I have you in the palm of my hand. Don't walk around, Lord. Don't walk around for me. You just got to call me. And I will. That's good news. Baby girl got a smile on her face. Lift my face up. That's good news. You right, sweetie. That's good news. It's great news. I'm excited about it. Because for too long, uh, most of us, thank you, Dr. Stewart, you see it coming. Here he comes down the street. Most of us were lost, we were tossed, we were confused, we were shut up, but we were, and we thought we were shut out, and then God's love found us, raised us up, saved us, delivered us, brought us out, set our feet on the solid ground, and here we are. Amen. Amen. Dr. Green, I seen your hand up. And you know what happened? Do, do you know how we got here? All we did was call me. Oh, yeah, I guess that's what they did. At some point, you got to push through. Yes. It's not in your toolbox to fix that it's broken. When it's a spiritual matter, this belongs to him. That's right. And even physically, it belongs to him. All of it belongs to him. But you got to call him. That's right. Listen, call him. I don't care where you are. Call him. Yeah. Stop doing what you're doing. Call him. Yeah. Don't go to sister girl. Don't go to, to bam bam or boo boo. Call him. Yeah. 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 And he will. Yeah. 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 See, I got a whole lot of He will. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, can I just have that? He will. And he has stand up. Would you mind saying? Yeah. Ladies, well, come on, my yeah. 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 I'm going to give you a call. You like my yeah. 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 He will Facebook. He will do it. Yes, he will. You and I just have to call Jesus is on the main line. Yeah. Tell him. 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 Tell
you need. Your daddy don't want you running to nobody else. You go to the father. He's your father now. That's right. And I hear David and his two of my kids, when my mother and my father forsake me, they no longer can pick me up. God says I'm right there. Hallelujah. He's been gone, but he's still here. God, when the kid that on, he's still here. And yes, he will. Yes, he will. Before you place your call, you got to believe that yes, he will. Thank you, Casey. There may be somebody here today, if you don't mind just taking a seat for about three minutes, somebody here today who may not have ever called on the name of the Lord. I just want to provide for you an answer. No, not just our answer. The answer. He can... He can do heart surgery and never leave a scar. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. How you know, Pastor? Because he operated on mine and I don't have any scars. Yes. But I do have a new heart. I do have a new start. I do have a fresh beginning. All because I called him. When life got bigger than I was, and even now, I still call him. Deacon Murray, in my pain, I call him. In my problem, I call him. In my pause, you ever had a pause in life where you can't go forward or back and you're just pause, you're just standing still. And even with people, you can call him. If there's somebody here who's never said yes to the Savior, I want to open up the doors of the church and also your heart. You have to do that. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone lets me in, 